Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm back, I'm recording from the comfort of my couch. I'm kicking back, it's Saturday night. Yeah, this is what I do on Saturday night. Not a lot going on here. But anyway, I'm actually recording from my couch because I recorded the intro to this video and then realized I didn't turn on the mic. So I'm ashamed to, do, to, to admit that, but eh, it is what it is. That said, I did record the entire Brownfield discussion, so I'm gonna flip over to that in a second, but just wanted to remind you to subscribe, like if you find any of these videos helpful. As far as today's conversation, we're gonna be talking, and I just spilled Red Bull all over me. We're gonna be talking about NSXT Brownfield migration today. This is really interesting, and it's a little different than the normal videos I film, because normally I'm kind of showing you guys how to do stuff, but Brownfield migration is something that's not really anything to show you, it's more just talking about your options. So that said, enough of me talking, let's get to the good stuff. So the first thing we need to talk about when we think about Brownfield deployments of NSXT is we need to level set and talk about what is Brownfield. When I talk about Brownfield, I'm talking about you have an existing virtual center, you have existing vSphere hosts, and you have some kind of workload sitting on top of those hosts. This could be just VMs or something like that. And basically the rule that we all follow if we're good little IT boys and girls is that we can't break things so therefore we can't just rip everything out and just start over. And honestly this is one of those things that back in the day when I was doing ACI I kind of ran into where I felt like ACI was awesome but it was awesome if it was Greenfield and if it was Brownfield then you just, you didn't do it. Awkward. So the good thing about NSXT though, is that you can absolutely do brownfield deployment and it actually works out pretty well. So let's talk about it. So basically these are just a couple of approaches that I came up with. This doesn't mean that these are the only approaches. These are just what I've seen and what I've talked to customers about. So the first approach is we just install NSXT on top of the existing vSphere host. So if we do this, we would use what's called a VLAN backed port group. Basically, it's just a port group, like if you're familiar with the VDS or a VSS even, it's just a port group, but NSX happens to own it. If we wanna put workloads on that new segment, all we have to do is then edit the VM settings and then just basically put the VM on the new NSXT segment. That's it, pretty straightforward. Now, the downside of that, of course, is that we're not doing overlay networking if you use these VLAN-backed port groups. So when I say that, I mean your existing default gateway would maintain the same. So basically, we'll say if you were on VLAN 20 before, you're still on VLAN 20 now. The only difference is that NSX will actually own that port group. That said, back to my point about routing, if we take this approach, then we're not doing any routing through NSXT at all. We're basically just dropping it out on the wire, just like if it was, again, a VDS port group. Now, the benefit of using the VLAN-backed port groups is that you can add distributive firewall and IDS IPS on top of it without re-IPing, without even changing VLANs. So from a Brownfield standpoint, this approach works very, very well, and I've seen a lot of people use this. The next approach you could take is maybe just set up a brand new NSXT cluster. Now I realize we're not talking about, you know, you have your Brownfield cluster over here, and now you have a new cluster, and you might say, well, Mike, technically that's Greenfield. Well, I don't like you if you say that. No, seriously though, it doesn't really matter. What I'm talking about, <laughs> I mean, technically, you could argue that that is Greenfield, but what I'm talking about is more kind of, you have your Brownfield, your existing vSphere environment here, and then over here you have kind of your Greenfield environment, and then basically you're, you're setting them up side by side and maybe moving your VMs across, but I still consider it Brownfield because we are working with that current environment. We just happen to be on different hosts. So that said, if we do this, then basically all we're doing is we're standing up NSX over here, and we're just gonna vMotion workloads over to those new NSX port groups. Now, if we do overlay networking, there is one approach that we can take, which I think is fantastic for this use case, which is called layer two bridging. Layer two bridging allows NSX to convert or translate between a VLAN and an overlay network that is owned by NSX. So to be more specific, let's say I have that VLAN 20 that, you know, in this example, right, it was this some kind of VM was on VLAN 20. Well, with NSX overlay, or with layer two bridging rather within NSX, I can say map VLAN 20 over to this overlay network. So what this brings me is now I can have that VLAN 20, all of the legacy stuff that hasn't been migrated to NSX, will actually think it's still on the same network or the same VLAN, even though the new VMs that are on NSXT are on the overlay network. So hopefully that makes sense, but basically we're bridging between overlay and VLAN. 
I already covered this, so I'll just continue on. So the other thing that I will mention is that if we do layer two bridging, it does use the edge nodes. So you would have to deploy NSXT edge nodes if you want to use this functionality, which shouldn't be a big deal. That's pretty standard in a deployment. That said, interesting note, if you are doing just plain old VLAN backed port groups, in this case right here, you don't actually need edge nodes at all with NSX. You can just literally prep a host you can basically create your networks in NSXT, your VLAN backed networks, and you're off to the races. You don't need to do any routing configuration or anything within NSXT if that's the case. Now that said, the last option that I think is a valid use for Brownfield is VMware HCX. HCX is a migration tool by VMware that actually comes bundled with NSX enterprise licensing. And basically this is a really powerful tool that basically can allow us to extend networks between vCenters, even if they're on different versions. So you can actually vMotion from like vSphere 6.5 to 7.0, which is something you can't do without HCX. It also does a lot of stuff like being able to plan waves of migration. So you can say, I want these 10 VMs to migrate together at this specific time and it'll actually seed the data and all kinds of stuff. So it's actually a really cool approach if you're looking at migrating. Well, one of the cool things about it is it can actually migrate from a VLAN and we can actually stretch that network over to an NSX network. So definitely a valid approach. I do wanna mention also that HCX can also stretch from NSXV, the older version, to NSXT as well. So that's an option if you are currently on V. Now I do wanna cover some of the must knows, kind of things you just absolutely should know before you dive into talking about doing a brownfield deployment of NSXT. The first thing is that when you prep a host for NSXT, if you haven't watched my other videos, I'll just kind of sum it up. NSXT will deploy, you'll deploy a manager, which is just an OVA, and that will push down VMware installation bundles to your host. Now this is non-disruptive, but if I'm being honest, and if I was the guy responsible for the uptime of those vSphere hosts, I'd probably set up a maintenance window, but you don't have to do it. I can tell you I've prepped hundreds, probably thousands of hosts by now. I've never had an issue with a host going down. I have had maybe out of, you know, literally 500 plus deployments, uh, I, I've maybe had one or two that I did have to reboot to finish the install to maybe something got kind of funny with the deployment. But to be honest, that was a long time ago and all an older version of code. So probably not even relevant anymore. Now, the other thing we already kind of talked about quite a bit is that NSXT supports those VLAN back segments. So you don't have to go kind of all in on NSXT right away. So keep that in mind. Again, we can start using the distributed firewall if you go with VLAN back port groups. So maintain your current VLANs, but now use the NSX distributed firewall, which is excellent. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos on the distributed firewall, you should definitely check them out right there wherever it comes, it might be over there. I don't know, it's gonna pop up at the top of your screen though. The other thing I wanna mention is that NSXT can be enabled on a single cluster. So you don't have to have it enabled on the entire vCenter, it can be just one cluster. And the nice thing about this is if you're using NSXV as I was kind of alluding to in the last slide, you can actually have both of them coexist in the same vCenter. Now the only gotcha here is basically you can't have them both on the same cluster. So if you have cluster A with NSXV and cluster B with NSXT, that's perfectly fine, but you can't have cluster A that has host on T and V at the same time. It just won't work. The last thing I wanna talk about is that NSXT can leverage the existing virtual distributed switch if you're using one, and it makes it really clean because basically now when you create those port groups in NSXT, it'll actually push them out to that current VDS. Well, the nice thing about that is that you don't have to allocate any uplinks for NSXT. Now, here's the caveat, and you probably see it here. You have to be on version 7.0 or newer of vSphere, and specifically of the distributed switch, before you can actually do this. If you are on an older version, you will have to dedicate at least one physical uplink to the NSX NVDS, which is basically a VDS, but it's owned by NSX, completely managed by it. So it would actually sit on your vCenter, but it would actually be managed entirely out of NSX Manager. So that's all I have for you in this video today. I hope it was helpful. I know I didn't get into the hands-on like I usually do, but I wanted to just kind of walk you through some of the options and some of the common things that I talk to people about when talking about brownfield situations. That said, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe or something. I don't know, I gotta figure out where we put these buttons. They're somewhere here, but please subscribe, like, share with your friends, share with your grandma if she's into tech. I don't really care. That said, I'll see you guys in the next video.